Brown University outlaws statements that make people feel impotent, angry, or disenfranchised. Colby College prohibits anything that could lead to a loss of self-esteem. The University of Connecticut banned inappropriate laughter. And West Virginia University warns incoming freshmen not to use terms like boyfriend and girlfriend. The school says those are too gender specific. Terms like lover and partner are encouraged. We've seen an awful lot of them where Christian students have been ruthlessly mocked, um, where uh, conservative students obviously have been too, and nobody's crying hate speech in those situations. I'm politically liberal. That like a lot of the uh, people who work with fire are. We get criticism from uh, of the people who don't know fire very well, um, saying, "Oh, you know, it's, you obviously have a conservative bias." So, so many, so many of your cases are conservative. A pro affirmative action rally at Berkeley um, it, it is not going to be shut down. The kind of speech that gets censored um, or punished uh, on campus, the kind of speech that fire um, defends. In the larger society, no, no even liberal Democrat would, would think that that could be punished. And it's really unfortunate and really kind of bizarre that there are people out there who call themselves uh, liberals, who believe in crushing speech that, that, that they don't like. But it happens all the time on American campuses. It happened recently at Bucknell. Anything which is intimidating, which is going to poison the campus environment, um, can't be allowed. You can't annoy someone. It's essentially up to them. It's, it can be enforced selectively, and it is enforced selectively, I would say, on a partisan basis. You want to encourage free speech, but if one person's free speech intimidates somebody else and keeps them from speaking, then, then it's a different issue. Campuses have gone further to try and foster a better climate. How is harassment defined here at Bucknell? If you're offended by it, that's, that's implicitly considered harassment. You never know what's going to be offensive. A hundred years ago, it was offensive to say blacks were the same as whites. Does that mean we shouldn't have been able to say it? Of course not. I mean, we're all sort of paranoid to a certain degree about what we say in certain forums. People hesitate, and you, you wonder about what you've said. You wonder if there's going to be repercussions. The student makes their case to a particular person who's in charge of the judicial hearings. You go in front of a few students and a few professors. I'm actually on this board, so I've seen a lot of them. You have witnesses called for both sides, and, and there's a formal hearing. You're not allowed to have a lawyer. Sometimes it's very difficult to have your due process rights there, so it's, it, it's really scary. You're usually sentenced, I say sentenced, you're usually um, required to undergo some sort of sensitivity training. I was actually brought up on charges by the dean of students also, so I've seen, I've seen both sides of it. You can't speak out one way or the other, um, either in favor or against the speech code. The university has essentially instituted a gag rule. We had a huge problem with, with the counterweight, our, our paper. We published an issue about the speech code. There was, you know, a big to-do over the counterweight, and so our dean of students held a meeting. He invited sort of the preeminent liberal groups, or at least that are easily identifiable as liberal. There was a secret meeting at which I was threatened. Denise was threatened. We had the dean yelling at us, the different university administrators just yelling at us in a group of angry students. What kind of threats did you hear from the other students at this meeting? Stuff along the lines of, uh, I really want to punch you right now. Some of them have just been really mean to me because of my beliefs. And like, I can handle them being mean to me, but to have a university employee just attacking me on a personal level. And the administrator who threatened you, is this person still with the university? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so maybe it's not really a threat. What she said to me was, I was lucky that the other students there were such good kids or else I could have gotten hurt. I think that's wildly inappropriate of a, an administrator to do that. After about 45 minutes, this guy Ferraro turned to me. I was the editor of the counterweight at that time, and he said, knowing how upset people are, would you run these articles again, these articles saying that the speech code is bad? And I said, yeah, I would. Dean Ferraro was incensed. He told us to leave. We kind of did one of those, like, how can you do this? And it's not like we were freezing, we were just flabbergasted. He threatened to call the cops. Clearly he revealed that he wasn't impartial. Right after that I had to go through this trial, so I find it a little, little hard to believe that there's not some relationship there. Uh, it went on for months. I was resoundingly acquitted 
fire wrote a letter to support me. All kinds of students testified that it was nonsense. There have been a few incidents where kind of bad things have happened, and they've ignored it. Somebody chalked outside the student union, die B-U-C-C, die Bucknell Conservatives Club. Of course, you know, nothing happened. One of our members, Allison Kasich, she was the secretary at the time. She had some kind of conservative sign on her door. A person wrote Nazi party on it, maybe a swastika too. Nothing ever came of it. There have been a lot of swastikas drawn around about us. If they were to decide a conservative was harassed, I think a lot of people on campus would be shocked by that. A student drove back from the mall, which is 20 minutes south of here, a student of Asian descent and felt like he or she was being tailed. And the next day, there was an all-campus email saying, oh no, watch out for this. I hope the student wasn't being tailed, and I hope especially that the student wasn't being tailed because of their race, but there was no evidence, but it, it didn't need evidence. There wasn't any all-campus email saying, like, watch out for people drawing swastikas on your door. Whatever they're going to do, they ought to do it equitably. If they're going to panic every time somebody feels offended or threatened or whatever, why is it that it has to be done on such a partisan, selective basis? Well, I can't answer that question, Charles. But on another road trip, I discover that Bucknell isn't the only place that selectively enforces speech codes. At the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, you'd better be careful when choosing your Halloween costume. Everybody was dressed up in Halloween costumes. It was right before Halloween. Members of fraternity, they're going to a party and they dress up like the Jackson 5. Five members from Jackson, Tennessee, and they decided to dress up as the Jackson 5 because that's how they were known. They were going to dress up as, as somebody for Halloween, so that's who they chose. They were dressed as the Jackson 5, but they, they as part of their costumes, they were in blackface. Right. I don't think they were doing anything to, you know, degrade black people. It happened over a weekend and then on the following Monday, they were reprimanded. And the university ended up suspending the entire fraternity. The party didn't even take place on campus. It was dealt with pretty harshly. If three black guys had chosen to paint their faces white and dress up as the Bee Gees, whether everybody would have gotten offended. You know, I doubt it. Well, the man does have a point. White chicks. You know them girls ain't gonna be there? Oh, they'll be there. They'll have to do the unthinkable. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? Okay, so maybe the people running UT have no sense of humor. Lefty uh, administrators are the Dean Wormers of the 21st century. In movies like Animal House, it was some sort of pretentious establishment twit, uh, and now it's a different sort of pretentious establishment twit. The Dean Wormers over at UT were running a pretty tight ship. After coordinating with the fraternity's national organization, the chapter was kicked off campus. Punishing an entire fraternity because a few of its members made a poor choice in Halloween costumes? That's a harsh penalty. So you can imagine what happened when this student was the target of emails calling him a raghead terrorist and suggested that he be shot in the face. Nothing, nothing has been done about that. Nothing has been done. Absolutely nothing. At the University of Tennessee, wearing the wrong Halloween costume can result in a punishment but a student who sends an email talking about shooting people in the face gets off scot-free? Why is that? I mean, he is an outspoken conservative, you know, writing for our paper. I often write in defense of the United States in the face of much of its criticism that it gets disproportionately more on campus than I think uh, in the rest of our culture. Sigmani, they're not sympathetic to just because he has a point of view which they don't agree with. I believe that the reason no action was taken was because Sigmani is an outspoken conservative. That's the only thing I could make of it. You know, it seems that the administration's policy is hate speech is wrong against certain people. The trouble began with an editorial Sigmani wrote for the school paper. In it, he was critical of the issues committee, the arm of the university responsible for bringing speakers to campus. They are all most always far-left ideologues. Parents were probably